So today is just going to be a nice casual little question and answer session. Um, I asked in a couple of places for some questions a while, uh, a week or so ago, and got some here. So let's uh, let's get into it. First one from uh, W. Thornton. Where did you get your electronics knowledge from? School or on-the-job training or self-taught? Well. Um, it's a combination of all of those things, actually. Uh, I started off, you know, as a teenager back in the 80s, just tinkering around in my parents' basement um, and subscribed to a bunch of the electronics magazines of the day, radio electronics, popular electronics, stuff like that, and made some of the projects from their, uh, from their articles. And... Uh, went from there but then after I graduated high school I did go to college and uh, so it was a one-year program uh, the core of the course was uh, it was called telecommunications technician course uh, and since then I've just been tinkering and uh, and my employer has uh, been doing a pretty good job of keeping me up to date on stuff that they need me to know so it's, it's been a combination of all of the above and surprisingly or maybe not um i've been picking up a lot of stuff on youtube in the last few years um as i've been getting further and further away from component level stuff at work i've been missing that and i've been uh, watching various different channels on youtube so from one of my patreons Mark, what hardware software do you use for video and how do you do it? Hmm. He's got a bunch of questions. Like many YouTubers, you don't seem to have a face. Well, uh, yeah, that, um, yeah, I, I like the idea of not being recognized on the street, quite honestly. And I also like the idea of my employer not necessarily being able to hold me to account for things that I say. Because we've all seen this in the news before somebody's employer gets their nose at a joint for, over something that somebody has said online and then that person gets fired. So that's why. Um, anyway, hardware and software for video. I'm going to switch to a different camera temporarily. So here is my setup just backed up a little bit. This the current phone is a Samsung uh, uh, Galaxy S8. That's 90% of the video you hear and I'm just using its built-in microphone. Uh, off to this side here is uh, the computer that does 90% of the recording when I'm uh, doing mailbags and stuff. And there is the microphone up there. I did a video on that some time ago when I got it. Put a link up in the corner there. Uh, the microphone is connected down to this M Audio uh, audio interface, which is USB connected to the computer. And then on the computer itself, uh, to capture, I'm using this uh, little program called Simple Screen Recorder. Um, just a basic Linux uh, screen recorder program. And the computer itself is nothing to write home about. It's literally something that I found on the side of the road and put together with a few extra parts that I had lying around. The monitor is something that I got from a yard sale. And there's the basic specs on the computer in case you care. Oh, and I don't, I uh, just got this and I haven't really been playing with it very much. Uh, this, I got, uh, I got a gift card actually. And uh, so I picked up this little DJI, uh, what is this thing called? Osmo Pocket, I think it is. Little gimbal camera. It's kind of neat. Um, you may be seeing this guy more and more. It's, it's more of an action camera really, but it's a pretty good camera. And if I have to move around going forward, I'll be using this one. As you can tell, my videos don't do a lot of moving around normally. What else does Mark have to say? Why do you live in Canada where it's cold all the time and gangs of rabid moose roam in the streets? Now, fortunately, those moose are uh, in a, in a, mostly in a different province, so I don't have to worry about them. They stay on the other side of the border. We don't have earthquakes. We don't have hurricanes. We don't have venomous snakes or other venomous wildlife. Um, yeah, it gets cold as hell in the winter. But the summers are amazing, except for the mosquitoes. But they're mostly not a big deal anymore. And if the quarantines stop, it's also a good place to visit in the summer. 
Come, bring your tourist dollars. So what's next? Uh, I don't drink, but I love that you have new brews all the time. So I was wondering, what is the best and worst that I can remember? Hmm, that's from Chaos Havoc. Well, actually, one of my favorites just happens to be the one that I've got there. It's Grandpa's Sweater Oatmeal Stout from Barnhammer Brewing, which is conveniently located very close to one of my work locations. If I have a choice, I'll have a stout or an oatmeal stout if I can, um, or a porter or that kind of a dark malty beer. Um, ones that I don't like, ones that have weird fruit flavors and stuff like that. Um or really super bitter IPAs. Not really a big fan of those. But as you've seen over the past many, many months, I'll try just about any kind of beer once. At least once. Okay, another one from my patrons. From Mike, we'd be getting back into working on your train layout. Actually, what I'd love to see is if you can make a locomotive for less than 100 bucks using a cheap Chinese motor, gearbox, 3D printed plastic parts etc um and he adds some other stuff on there well getting back to trains the i haven't lost interest in trains but for video uh one thing that i've noticed is it's just a practical thing the railroad videos take multiple days multiple weeks sometimes to do the project because you got to wait for glue to dry you got to wait for paint to dry um, this and that and the other thing. And for video, it's, it's not the, doesn't work out well for me with my schedule, my normal schedule and electronics video. Most of them I can shoot in a single evening or a couple of evenings, worst case scenario. Uh, and normally that's all I've got time for, uh, between my job and family and all that good stuff. Um, uh, if I hit the jackpot and turn YouTube into a full-time career or eventually a retirement career, I'm probably going to have more time to actually spend on doing that kind of project. However, back here, some of you guys may have noticed, is this locomotive in partial uh, assembly mode. This was originally from a, a train set uh, from a... A Christmas train set from a grocery store uh, for about four or five years they put out a special issue train set each year um, and it was not just your typical crap train set it was actually good quality stuff and this was the locomotive in one of them it was originally a saddleback locomotive which means the cab was there uh, in the middle and I decided to pick one of those up because they were a hell of a good deal and I decided to convert this guy or start converting him into a more typical prototype that would have been seen in Western Canada rather than the Camelback so move the cab back give it some running boards and uh, and a bunch of other things put some valve put the valve clusters back there put different handrails on it and stuff like that so that's been kind of a work in progress that gets touched now and again, but it's been sitting back there for quite a while untouched. So I'd kind of like to get back to that one. Um, and the layout, I'll probably overlay some video here. You'll see that the part of the layout, maybe about a third of it is sort of finished, uh, reasonably finished anyways, but the rest of it just is blue styrofoam and unfinished plaster and stuff like that large parts of it over by my workbench here have uh, just become a place to catch stuff you can see uh, partially finished projects up there and uh, the mailbag stuff and a bunch of other things so I am going to get back to it now and again and you'll see the occasional railroad video show up but just because model railroad projects take so much time they're not practical for me to do on video that's the short answer um, but they will show up now and again. Somebody else asked, Fred Finstone asked about trains as well. You like your trains, so how much of the stuff you buy is used for that? Well, there's, um, recently not as much, but again, there is, there's a fair bit of stuff that showed up in the mailbags over the years that is intended to eventually be used in the, uh, in the model railroading, or at least parts of it. Terminal blocks, and I've got more of those touch switch sensors that you've seen me use, and I've got a lot more, uh, 
uh, servos, to, servo motors to add to, to switch machines and things like that. But again, those projects, I've already done one copy of that on video. I don't need to do the same video over and over again, I don't think. But some of it does get used in the railroad occasionally. So Retro Electrons 2 says, you buy a lot of stuff. Yes, yes I do. Is there a reason for this? I, I'd buy cheap if I thought it would be usable. I'd buy in volume and it's good reason, but I don't have much need for surpluses of stuff. Hmm. Some of the stuff, oh, a lot of the stuff I use for just various projects, some of it just for learning and practice, like this thing. Um, some of it are practical, like the, uh, the power supply over here. A lot of it is just for fun. Uh, some of it I buy just for the hell of it. This thing, for instance, did I need it? No. Was that a fun challenge to put together? Oh, absolutely. Um, am I going to buy another LED cube kit and put it together? Probably not. But you never know. Plus, it's just a fun blinky light thing to have kicking around. Um, and maybe one day I'll get around to programming some different patterns into this. I don't know. You never know. It's, it's all about having fun, really. That, that's, that's what the point of a hobby is. And that's kind of what the point of my YouTube channel is. This is mostly just me doing thing, hobby stuff that I think is fun and rolling the camera while I'm doing it. So yeah, if, if, if that's, uh, if having fun experimenting with electronics and playing with them is your idea of a good time, then that seems like a good enough reason to me to pick up some of this stuff. Now then, I buy it cheap, just like uh, he su suggested. I intentionally buy it cheap. Part of that is because back when I was getting started in this, back in the early 80s, components were hard to find and expensive as hell. So I did what I could with what I could get my hands on. A lot of times it was salvaged. Um, but now that things are so cheap and available, I can afford to stock up my shop a little bit ahead of time and have stuff sitting here waiting for when inspiration strikes me. So if I decide that I want to try some different 555 circuit, I got a drawer full of them. Um, I got a bunch of different LEDs of different types. I had this box on hand uh, when I decided to do this. I had that cable on hand. Um, these banana jacks. Um, this you didn't even see me make. I just did it off camera. I just put a couple of banana jacks together, soldered some header pins that I had onto them. Um, soldered, what, five of them wide because there's five vertical traces on these little miniature breadboard pieces that I also had because I bought a bunch of them because I thought they would be useful someday. And there we go. I have a power breakout for that that I can use on multiple different uh, places. Yeah, just little handy things like that. You never know. So what else we got here? Uh, Simple Electronics asks, actually asked a couple of different questions. If I had 500 bucks for a workshop upgrade, what would it be? Probably a 3D printer. Maybe a fancy digital scope though. You know I've got this scope over here that I got in a, I picked up, uh, used locally. It's a four channel Tektronix scope, it's 300 megahertz, so it's, it's a solid scope. But it doesn't have a lot of that fancy analytics kind of stuff that the newer scopes have. So that might be fun to play with if, uh, if I get a good price on one. I don't know, it's a toss up. Uh, a 3D printer would be awesome to have too, but I've been doing 3D printing at the library, so... Well, actually, the library's closed right now because of this stupid virus thing. So maybe having my own 3D printer would be a handy thing. I don't know. So Dean Hintz asks, uh, another one of my Patreons, thank you very much, you generous people. Um, he asks, or he says actually, I like the Arduino videos. Maybe some Raspberry Pi stuff and keep the mailbags coming. Don't worry, the mailbags are not going to end anytime soon. I've got a good stockpile already, and things, despite the uh, the virus thing and the uh, shutdown for a while in China, things are still showing up occasionally. Um, I've placed a couple of other orders with a couple of other different sellers as well, just just in case. But yeah, the mailbags are definitely going to uh, keep coming, and Arduino videos. 
I've been I've got a fair number of Arduino projects that I've done over the years and I do have a fair number of Arduino boards still in stock that I haven't used yet so I'm going to guess that there will be Arduino videos coming up over time uh, as I decide that I want to do one because that's what having fun in your shop is all about right uh, Gerald42 says, oh yeah, I remember this guy. His logo on his YouTube channel is the Don't Panic button from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, just like that one over there. So uh, yeah, it's it's hard to forget him. I got a reminder over there. Anyway, anyways, what did he ask? He asked, what movies do you watch? Uh, TV streaming services, any favorites? And on YouTube, which electronics and non-electronics channels do you like? Well... <laughs> So on the screen right now should be scrolling my uh, my YouTube subscription list. There's a lot of them. There's hundreds of them. Uh, you may recognize some of these. You probably subscribe to some of these guys too. But I watch, yeah, a lot of electronics video uh, channels. But there's an awful lot of uh, channels that you can see in that in that list. Um, Movies and TV streaming. We've only got Netflix and an antenna. Um, I dropped cable TV probably over a decade ago because as a cost value thing, it just wasn't worth it. We were watching like cable for maybe like an hour a week as a family. And quite honestly on Netflix, maybe watch a movie now and again, but I don't really get into the series too much. I don't know why it just never happened. Um, yeah, mostly I watch YouTube. Uh, I said, yeah, a lot of electronics videos, of course. A uh, certain number of woodworking videos. Um, yeah, so it's it's mostly people doing stuff with their hands that I watch. And I think the last one on this page, anyways, from Simple Electronics again. Oh, buddy, you got two questions in here. Well, I didn't say you couldn't. Uh, which videos are your favorite to make? I kind of enjoy doing mailbags just because... They're quick and they're, there's kind of that, hey, it's Christmas morning or your birthday kind of vibe. Um, so I'm having fun with that. But project videos where I do an experiment or tinker with something, not necessarily having an outcome, kind of like that guitar tuner video I did a few weeks ago. I mean, that was purely because I was curious. Um, I've done a handful of tinkering with this type of module videos in the past as well. Did one tinkering with uh, stepper motors and I want to do more of that kind. Um, there was one that I was preparing to make and then I noticed some other bigger channel did basically that same video the week that I was planning on doing it. So I may revisit that at some point. I don't mind doing shop projects, just things to make my life easier around here or a little bit more comfortable or even just the few videos that I'm the few videos that I did to make that one if it if I didn't enjoy it I wouldn't have made it and you'd never see it how's that yeah that's all the questions that I got this time around okay I might do another one of these in another year or so um I was just when I decided to do this one I was feeling a little weirded out just by the situation in the world right now and it's having trouble getting motivated so Figured you guys could help motivate me a little bit by asking some questions, and that worked. I've got a few more video ideas now in my head that I'm going to do sometime in the next, when I have time. Unfortunately, while while a lot of people do have a lot of time on their hands right now just because of this whole COVID virus thing, um, I'm, I work in the telecommunications industry, and we've been federally designated as critical infrastructure which means not only am I not getting time at home, time off, uh, time away from that, I'm actually on call more and I'm, um, and I'm getting weird shifts and crap like that. So I'm going to do my best to keep the videos coming out on the regular schedule that you've all gotten used to. If I don't, sorry, just life got in the way. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's going forward. Now there's the kind of video I don't like doing. I don't like doing channel update videos because they're boring and 99% of people don't give a damn. Uh, so that's enough of that. Uh, thank you for watching both this one and all the videos, all the 
couple of hundred videos I've got now. Wow, where's the time gone? Uh, thanks to those of you who asked questions. That was awesome. Um, I'm, I'm glad people give a damn enough to actually uh, actually ask questions and some good ones too. Thanks to Patreon supporters for helping keep the mailbags coming in because I know you guys like those. Those are actually the most popular videos that I do. I like doing them. You guys like watching them. So they're going to keep happening. Um, and yeah, I will talk to you later. Hopefully next week.